Let's look at another example using specific heat capacity. So here we have me. Me, I'm initially at 37 degrees Celsius and I'm dropped into a pot of water initially at 95 degrees Celsius. This does not sound like much fun. Uh, so here I am, let's maybe we try to draw. So here's the water here. And the water is actually fairly hot, so I'll draw it red. So there's the water. And what happens to me? I'm dropped into it. So I guess there's me just being sort of thrown into it. So I'm just gonna drop into the water. Probably not good, I'm probably not very happy here. So I'm just going into the water. So the water's at 95 degrees Celsius and I'm at 37. And I'm saying this time we're given that the equilibrium temperature is 75. What's the specific heat capacity of the pot? Now we're gonna again assume that no heat is lost to the surroundings. And this time we have three different materials. You see that we have me, so there's my mass, there's the mass of the water as well, because we have water that's in the pot, and we have the pot itself. So we have three different players here. There's Mitch, there's the pot, and there's the water. So there's three separate key ingredients here. Now we're given the specific heat capacity of the water is again this number we know well, 4186. Uh, but we also are given my specific heat capacity. Turns out, I'm not entirely sure how we know this. Well, actually, never mind. Uh, this is actually pretty easy to find. Um, you could actually figure out how much energy it takes to raise the temperature of a human. Uh, turns out, I looked it up, it's around 3470. It all depends on some other factors, but this is a fairly okay number to put in. So if we use this, then we can again deal with um, specific heat capacity. So the goal this time, we want to find specific heat capacity of the pot. This is what we're trying to do. So again, no matter what's going on, I take a look at Q lost equals Q gained. So who lost temperature and who gained temperature? Just keep those separate and then deal with it. So let's see, who's losing temperature? Well, the water is going to lose temperature and the pot is going to lose temperature. That's because initially the water and the pot, since they're touching each other, we're going to assume that they're at the same temperature. Whereas Mitch, that's me, being dropped in, I'm at 37. So we have the pot and the water are going to lose energy, going to lose temperature, and I'm going to gain. So we can say on the right side at least it's going to be just Q Mitch. And on the left side we're going to have Q of the pot plus Q of the water. Now it's gonna be annoying to write pot, water, and mitch, so I'm gonna say P, W, and M. I hope that's okay. So let's deal with it. Now we have, remember, we have this equation. For each of these, we have Q equals M, C, delta, T. So I'm just gonna put in proper subscripts. It's just now a matter of proper bookkeeping here. So I have Q of the pot. That's gonna be, let's see, M of the pot times C of the pot times delta T of the pot. Plus, let's see here, now I have Q of the water, so I have mass of the water times C of the water times delta T of the water. That's gonna equal mass of Mitch times C of Mitch times delta T of Mitch. Now this may seem totally crazy, but it's we just have these three different terms. See, we have that one, we have that one, and we have this one. There's three different players, pot, water, and Mitch. So what do we do with this? Well, now we just start filling in the values that we know. Uh, so I can do that, I can start putting in the numbers. Uh, so let's see here, I've got mass of the pot is 200, right? So I'm gonna say 200 times specific heat capacity of the pot. Do I know that? Nope, in fact, that's the whole goal. I wanna find CP, that's what I'm trying to find. So I'm gonna leave it as CP, I don't know what it is, I'm hopefully gonna solve it. Now what's the change in temperature of the pot? Well, it's gonna go from 95 to something. And we know the something, it goes from 95 to the equilibrium temperature, which is 75. So it's 95 minus 75. I've dealt with that left term. Now I add to that the stuff for the water. So I have the mass of the water, which is 100, times the specific heat capacity of the water, which I know is 4186. And I know the change in temperature of the water as well. It's also 95 minus 75. Remember, because the water is at 95 degrees and it goes to an equilibrium of 75. So actually this is, although it looks ugly, it's gonna be way easier than the first example. Now I have the mass of Mitch, which is 75 kilograms. 
and I have specific heat capacity of Mitch, which is 3470. And I have change in temperature of Mitch. In this case, it goes from 37 to 75. So to make it positive, I have to put the 75 first. So 75 minus 37. And away I go. Now I know that 95 minus 75, that's 20. So that's nice. That at least makes these ones right here easier. And uh, what else can I do? I can say that 75 minus 37, I can deal with that. That would be, what's that, 38, I think. Yep. So, okay, that makes it a little bit easier. So I can say 20 times 200, that I can actually do without a calculator. I know that that gives me, let's see, 20 times 200, that's 2 times 2, which is 4, and then add 3 zeros. So 4,000 CP. Plus, now this isn't going to be quite as easy. I have, um, actually, I guess I can do it. I have 20 times 100, so that's um, 2,000. 2,000 times this right here. So I have to do 2 times this whole thing, which is a 4, uh, what would that be? A 3, 7, 2, and i got to add 3 zeros. You can always do this on a calculator if you're not sure. This should work. 8, eight 3, 7, 2, yeah, 0, 0, 0, good. And that equals... Uh, in this case right here, this I'll need a calculator for. I'm not that good with mental math then. So I can deal with that. Uh, let me just try to get my calculator out of the way. Here we go. So I want to do 38 times 3, 4, 7, 0 times 75. And I get 9, 8, 8, 9, 5, 0, 0. So 9, 8, 8, 9, Five zero zero. Now, if I want CP by itself, I just got to move this over. So that means I got to do this minus this. Okay, so I'll say this answer right here minus this answer over here, which was eight three seven two zero zero zero, and I get an answer of let's see, that would be fifteen. Well, one five one seven five zero zero. I take that number, and that's going to be times the four thousand. So I can divide by that. Again, you can always take your time and go really nice and slow. But I get a number of let's see, three seventy nine. And in this case right here, I am only allowed to use two significant figures, so that will make it uh, three hundred. Well, three hundred seventy nine will turn into. 380. That'll round to that. And of course, that is in units of, let's see now, that would be joules per kilogram per degree Celsius. This will be my answer. That is what CP is. So the specific heat capacity of the pot is going to be 380 joules per kilogram per degree Celsius.